Hi, my name is Christian and I'm a PhD student at Center for Energy Informatics at the University of Southern Denmark. And I will give a presentation of the paper Can we benefit from game engines to develop digital twins for planning the deployment of photovoltaics? And the agenda is that I will go through the motivation behind the study, then I will give the terminology and use cases of digital twins, then I will move on to give the benefits of applying Unreal Engine 5 for developing digital twins. Then we'll give the scope and experimental design of the study. Then I will show the results and give a discussion. And finally, I will give a conclusion and the future prospects of the study. There's a limited amount of literature regarding digital twins in the PV domain. And we want to explore and exploit game engine technology to see if we can build digital twins in a PV domain. And game engine brings built-in functionality, tooling and assets. And furthermore, they bring a high degree of visual appeal. And the visual appeal can be used to engage stakeholders and increase the communication between the stakeholders. And it's also very beneficial for non-technical stakeholders. And Game engines have already been used to or used as a monitor or dashboard for real-time applications. But the difference here is that we want to push the boundaries of the game engine and see if we can look ahead through simulation capabilities in the game engine. Digital twins are a concept that stems from the early 2000s and has recently received increased attention both in academia and in industry. And there's a little consensus about the terminology and use cases of a digital twin. So for this reason, I will explain how the concept was applied in this study. So first of all, you have the real world with the, with the physical twin and you have the digital space with the digital twin. And then these two twins are interconnected in order to exchange data. And we use the classification of a digital twin, digital shadow and a digital model. So the use cases of a digital shadow is to monitor the physical twin or collect data about the physical twin. And it can also be to provide visualization early in the development phase, for example, through computer design. The digital model can be used for simulation purposes also early in the, in the development phase, but it can also be used in later phases in order to improve the physical twin. And then you can also apply optimization through simulation and prediction. And finally, you can combine the digital shadow and the digital model in order to achieve autonomous control. So autonomous control means that you have a feedback loop where you collect data and use the real-time data with historical data and you make simulations or predictions, you make optimizations, and then you, then you make uh, decisions about how to operate the physical twin. Digital twins come with a set of challenges and gaps according to the literature. So first of all, lack of consensus in the terminology makes it difficult to communicate about the digital twins and what the concept is constituent of. And furthermore, there's the lack of standards and frameworks, which makes it difficult for developers on how to get started and developing digital twins. Then there's the problem of interconnectivity and interoperability between the physical twin and the digital twin. And this is related to the heterogeneous data sources that also, that also exist in these uh, environments. So you have different sensors and actuator technology, and you might also have different database formats for your historical data and streams for real-time data and so on. And then there's the problem of tooling which concrete technologies can we apply to start implementing digital twins? And then finally, there's the cost, development costs involved with starting to build and maintaining the digital twins. So for this study, Unreal Engine 5 was chosen as the game engine for developing the digital twin of the PV system. And the primary reason for this choice is that it, it's visual appealing compared to the competitors. And furthermore, the benefits and features of Unreal Engine 5 is that it provides UI toolkit for developing, for example, dashboards. It also provides the possibility of ingesting data from historical databases or real-time sensors. It also provides a physics engine, a geo-referencing system for 
choosing your location on Earth, which is very relevant when you're developing PV applications. It also comes with a prefabricated assets uh, through a marketplace where you can download them for free or by paying a small fee. Then it gives high performance for scalability through its fragmented segmentation of the world. Furthermore, it provides an integrated environment for developing the digital twin, so most of the tools is integrated in a single environment. Then you can reuse existing 3D models, for example, if you have buildings and so on already existing in computer-dated design files. And lastly, it provides high-fidelity real-time visualization and graphic capabilities. The scope of this study involves the planning of deployment of a PV system and we consider the case of a residential rooftop PV system where there's no battery and no inverter connected and this is for simplicity reasons. And we want to see if we can use Unreal Engine 5 to estimate the annual production of a PV system. And in this case, when we are in the planning phase, it also means that we have no physical twin yet. So the use case of this is for simulation purposes. In order for us to simulate this, we need some scenarios. And the scenario here is that we have envir an environment with a sun that is located correctly on the sky according to position on Earth. And the sun also emits light upon the PV array. And the PV array has a certain orientation and it also has a certain slope. And furthermore, the PV array consists of individual modules and each module consists of individual PV cells. And this has to be modu modeled inside Unreal Engine. And I want to show you a video here with each of the scenarios. And there's a baseline scenario that involves no obstacles. We want to represent obstacles. And in this case, we chose to represent obstacles as trees, but it could also be buildings and other kinds of obstacles that hinders the annual productions of the PVs. The experimental design consists of a range of parameters, and these parameters are the azimuth or orientation. This was set to zero degrees, which by convention is true south. And true south is optimum for locations that are located above the equator. Then the slope was set to 20 degrees, which is not optimum, however it fits the slope of the rooftop. And then each PV module were designed in Unreal Engine 5, and they consist of 6 times 10 individual cells, so a total of 60 cells. And each module has a capacity of 375 watt peak under standard test conditions. And this is what is typically found in commercially available PV modules. And the simulation was set to a duration of one year to estimate the annual PV production. The, simula the simulation step size was set to one minute and the simulation speed was set to 10 milliseconds. And this is limited by the hardware on which you execute the simulation on. And for the precision, two precision was considered, and these are Odense and Singapore. And the reason for these two locations are that they, we expect to see a significant difference in the amount of PV that is produced in these two locations. And in Odense, we expect to see a pattern that match the radiation incident for this location. So we expect to see a peak during the summer. And in Singapore, which is located very near equator, we expect to see a more evenly distributed amount of uh, PV production. I want to talk about the implemented simulator in Unreal Engine 5. Remember that Unreal Engine 5 is a real-time simulator and therefore we needed to implement a simulator that is able to fast forward in time to estimate the annual PV production. And in order to estimate the PV production, the PVs need a light source, and typically this light source consists of two components, 
direct beam and the fused beam and we got the impression that it was possible to extract this, this information from Unreal Engine but unfortunately it is not so what we did instead was to make a line trace mechanism that imitates direct beam and I want to show you actual footage of the simulator and how it looks when executed So if we look at the simulator here, this is actual how it looks when executed. We see that the position of the sun changes accordingly to the simulation time. And we also see that any obstacle such as, such as trees that has a collision box hinders the production of the PV cell. So for each advancement in the simulator, we accumulate each cell's production and then we lock this information in order to be able to plot the simulation afterwards. The simulation results were exported from Unreal Engine and then post-processed in Matplotlib. And the reason is that Unreal Engine does, does not provide any basic plotting features. But if we take a look at the plot on the left, we see the four scenarios and we see that in all cases the patterns of the estimated PV output follows the solar radiation incidence for these two locations. And we also see, as, as expected, that the trees uh, reduce the PV production. And we see that for Singapore, we see a significant drop in two places. And it was possible to go in and take a closer look at this data. And this is what we do on the right here for Singapore, where we plot the baseline against the scenarios with obstacles. And we see that there's a significant drop in certain time slots. And it was possible to use Unreal Engine to interactively go in in these time slots and see what causes the significant drop in these time slots. And for Odense, there was a plateau in April and if we went in and make a close inspection on this we actually see that we could navigate the model as well and see that we had an overlap between two obstacles at certain time slots. Um, so this was, it was useful to, to see what caused the reduction in the annual production for, uh, for these two uh, these two locations. The results indicate that it is possible to use Unreal Engine 5 in the planning of deployment of a PV system. However, the estimates are not that accurate compared to other simulation tools. And instead, we need real-world solar data to make these more accurate. At the same time, using Unreal Engine 5 for simulation purposes is very slow due to the rendering needs. And also, it may be more beneficial to integrate sophisticated PV output models to make more correct estimates of the PV system. And furthermore, it requires expertise and competences in Unreal Engine 5 and also in PV systems in general in order to make use of this uh, approach. In this study, we explored the built-in features of Unreal Engine 5 in PV planning applications. And we did this through a showcase of a simulated residential PV system in Unreal Engine 5. So in relation to digital twins, this is a digital model that is intended for use in the early phase of the development cycle. But Unreal Engine 5 is not a complete solution and implementing digital twins are still hard even though that such a tool as Unreal Engine 5 markets itself as a very promising tool for making digital twins. It might be very useful in monitoring applications such as digital shadows, but there's still a lot more work that needs to be done in order to, uh, for this to be useful in the simulation purposes. And in this regard, we also need to look more into scaling. So this is a residential PV system but what happens if you scale this solution up to city scale or even larger? And this was my presentation for today. 
And this is my information and I want to thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of uh, the presentations.